Dajiahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huo Guo Da Wang. Today I want to talk to you about the city you like to call Hong Kong. It's been all over the news recently, and a lot of people are confused as to why. What's up, Nathan Road? Hong Kong! It's a silly name, actually, because that's not even the real name of the city. If you had to come up with an English name for the city today, you would probably choose either Hong Kong, based on the local branch of Chinese, or Xiang Gang, based on the common language of Chinese people, Mandarin. That's right, just like how Chinese food in America is a weird, bastardized version of Cantonese food from 200 years ago, Hong Kong is an English bastardization of the city's real name. But it really doesn't matter what we foreigners call Xiang Gang in English. Because, and this is important here, Hong Kong is not part of the United States. It's not part of the United Kingdom, and this may be surprising to you, but it's also not part of Australia. It's part of China, and it always has been. Except, of course, for when Western colonial powers, specifically Britain, came to China to sell drugs to the local population and enforce a vast, highly illegal drug empire with warships and soldiers. They stole the entire Hong Kong area from China. At its peak, Britain was selling enough illegal narcotics every year in China to kill every single man, woman, and child on Earth twice over. When people talk about Western riches gained through slavery, I wonder why no one gives a damn about the Chinese. Well, I do. I give a damn. Eventually, Hong Kong came back to the motherland. And other than that period, no one has ever had valid claim to Hong Kong. In fact, that probably wasn't valid either. Because the British oppressed rebellions, had their way with the locals, and enacted a white supremacist apartheid, eventually people in Hong Kong gained a new identity, somewhere between Chinese and British. To this day, they drive on the wrong side of the street and have those goofy double-decker buses. But on the other hand, the people I've met in Hong Kong are generally super cool, and of course, it's a great international hub. Nothing I say in this video is meant to disparage Hong Kongers. On the contrary, to me, they are exactly as awesome as other Chinese people. But no matter how the people feel, and no matter how many levels their buses have, make no mistake, they are Chinese. When the British cartel finally returned Hong Kong to the mainland's control, it was granted a high level of autonomy. But the government didn't develop extensive extradition laws. No one seemed to notice this fact until a Hong Kong guy killed his pregnant woman in Taiwan and then just went back home to Hong Kong safe and sound. He even told the Hong Kong authorities he was guilty. You see, without extradition between the two, Hong Kong had no way to legally send the guy to Taiwan. Get it? There needs to be a way to deal with this loophole. So anyway, now there's a bill being pushed through to allow extradition from Hong Kong. The bill is applicable to Hong Kong and any place outside Hong Kong. Any place outside Hong Kong is immediately interpreted as mainland China in some people's minds. Foreign powers suddenly started butting in with their opinions and what they think China should do with its city because, you know, colonialism. To get Hong Kong back from the British after their time of being drug dealing warlords was over, China signed an agreement which basically promised not to interfere too much with their government. Why China would care about this agreement is beyond me, but I guess they had to do whatever it took to formally get their property back. Kind of like promising a retired Pablo Escobar that you'll keep your car waxed if he'll just please give it back to you. So now the bill's going through and there's a lot of protesters around. It's pretty hard to get a real gauge on the percent of people who support something, but we can estimate with polling. A petition in Hong Kong got 700,000 signatures for the bill to pass, which is pretty significant. You see, allowing people to murder pregnant women in Taiwan and not get punished for it in Hong Kong isn't a very popular idea in every circle for some reason. But the protests were pretty big too, some say up to a million people. Damn! So the protesters are complaining that the bill will allow mainland China to extradite critics of China. But let's take a look at what happens when the bill is examined by someone who actually understands legal stuff. Albert Chen Hun Yi, a legal scholar from the University of Hong Kong and Basic Law Committee member who previously cast doubt over the amendment, said the government's latest proposal is acceptable. 
Speaking on a radio program, he said there are clauses in the amendment bill to guard against political persecution and believes the central government would not easily request renditions. Even if it's a politically sensitive case raised by the mainland, the Hong Kong courts will review it if it involves political persecution, he said. I believe Beijing would not make an application lightly as it does not want a Hong Kong court to potentially rule that the mainland wants to politically persecute people. Okay, so a Hong Kong legal genius guy who was against the bill actually read it and now he's accepting of it. So why are all these people protesting again? The PRC says this idea that the bill is to extradite critics stems mostly from foreigners misrepresenting it. Of course, the way that's reported is that the PRC blames the West for the protests. Not exactly. They're saying that the protesters don't even understand the bill because foreigners have clouded the issue. Well, is that true? International critics have said, quote, We believe the proposed legislation would irreparably damage Hong Kong's cherished autonomy and protections for human rights by allowing the Chinese government to request extradition of business persons, journalists, rights activists, and political activists residing in Hong Kong. Apparently, there was a performance by the village people as well. So activists in the West get the ear of the media, which publish these kinds of stories, which makes the public panic, which the media can then report on. It's like a cycle in which no one wins but the inflammatory media and the activists. So international critics have apparently muddied the water by confusing everyone about what the bill actually does. Okay, but maybe the guy who killed his girlfriend in Taiwan, I don't know, maybe it was an accident. Can we just pretend it didn't happen somehow? Forget the whole thing and just hope no one ever does this again? No, it was no accident. The guy had this adorable girlfriend in Hong Kong. He took her to Taiwan, suffocated her, then stuffed her body into her own suitcase. Then he wheeled her out of the hotel, discarded her body, and caught a flight back to Hong Kong. Do you want him to go free, yes or no? Now, just look at this reporting comment from back when the murder story broke. Taiwanese authorities have requested he be extradited back to Taipei to face charges, but the case is proving to be a legal puzzle, as no extradition agreement currently exists. A special provincial law may need to be created for the purposes of this case. And that's exactly what's happening. Hong Kong is enacting a law to stop people like this from literally getting away with murder. If that's something we can't all agree on, then I don't know where to begin. I appreciate Hong Kong's political situation and their right to protest. What I hope happens is the bill passes, people get extradited for the most serious of crimes, and everyone goes back to being peaceful and content. But whatever happens with this bill and with Hong Kong, I just want to say, people, please don't do anything physically damaging to your loved ones. If you're getting dark thoughts, seek help before you do something you will regret. This is way, way too far, and my heart goes out to her family. Let's read laws with a level head. And for God's sakes, let's prevent psychopaths from getting away with murder. Thanks, everybody. See you.